Hello. Hey, everybody. It's Ethan McKinney. Welcome, McKinney. <laughs> Start again. McKinney. Hey, Ethan everyone. McKinney. It's Ethan McKinney, and welcome to the Two Minute Terminator. We break down the Terminator films two minutes at a time. Did you know that? Well, you do now, don't you? It's episode 57, and uh, the episode is called They Finally Jumped the Shark. We'll, of course, get to that. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh, on the other end of the line, we have a guest uh, presenter. Uh, make yourself known to the crowd, sexy voice lady. I'm um, Ellie's sexy sister. Um, I've got much bigger boobs. Um, I've got really big lips. I've got this kind of like croaky <laughs> voice. I eat cigarettes. That's how I stay so skinny. Um, and yet maintain a great rack. How are you, Ethan? I'm, I'm <laughs> great now I'm talking to you, you little minx. <laughs> Uh, no, it is, it is me. It is me. I've just got a really bad sore throat. If this is your but first, like, if it's your first, every person I've spoken to today was just like, "Oh my god, your voice is so sexy and raspy. Just talk to me." I was like, "Okay, it hurts, but okay." Yeah, I was going to say, uh, listeners, if it's your first episode, don't get used to this. We're not talking to Kathleen Turner from her Body Heat days in the early eighties. <laughs> uh, it's actually my regular co-host Ellie with a throat infection or something's wrong with her but my god she sounds great doesn't she oh something's wrong with me or is something right with me um uh, Ethan, it's all right music. it sounds amazing it, it just it just hit the music <laughs> stirring yeah i think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack howdy stranger don't say howdy stranger to me You didn't do the fourth. Thank God. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> yeah, it so good. Uh, yeah, we're back. We do break down the Terminator films two minutes at a time, and the two minutes uh, that we're going to discuss, the two minutes bridging the gap of time, uh, is one hour and 14 minutes to one hour 16 minutes. It opens with uh, Sarah's lovely uh, Amelia Clark's rather giant bin lid face, uh, as big as you like in the screen. <coughs> Looks like a little bit of a garbage oh God, pile of ice. <laughs> Like the lid of a like Oscar, like Oscar the Grinch. Exactly. She looks like the lid of a garbage pail with eyes painted on. I'm just kidding, Amelia. You know I love you. Uh, she says the words "I don't know" as a carry on from the previous scene, and the scene, of course, ends with old Kyle meeting his younger pre, uh, I guess, war, future war self. Uh, and pre peeps. We'll just call it pre peeps. Jai Courtney, of course, says this is going to sound kind of strange, and then we won't find out what he says until tomorrow's episode. But. Uh, I've got an idea what he said to him. <clears throat> Go on. No, I'm going to touch you and it's going to feel very strange. <laughs> oh, that voice. We can just do a oh. whole hour on your voice, Ellie. No, <clears throat> I've got far more important things to do. Okay, well, so... Well, listeners, let me know what you think. Even if you listen to this in the future, if we get some random tweets <laughs> in about five years' time on the Twitter page and go, yes, keep the voice, uh, I will immediately find Ellie and just punch her right in the throat because uh, I like the, the way this sounds, Ellie. I can't lie to you. <laughs> you sound fantastic. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, I'll make it last. Um, so, yeah, the first thing that we kind of are exposed to in this particular two minutes, and <laughs> um, we have. Stop it! It's amazing. Got, uh, we have Kyle. Um, <laughs> being a proper sleaze, by the way, he's proper creeping. Um, he uh, he's like, well, since we're about to run out of air, and in that moment, I just wanted to hear, bow, bow, bow. I've been really trying, baby. Uh, and then just, I expected the mood, the mood lighting to kind of like come down. Maybe some candles would just ignite, and then he's just gonna sweep in there and start feeding her pony. But oh no, oh no, who's this at the door to cock block Kyle? Amazing. With his um, silvery arm of justice. I, exactly. Yeah, this, Pierce me this, with your steely blade. Um, well, this my is first thought I, was... Well, this is why I'm calling the show Jump the Shark, but continue with your thoughts. We'll get to my feelings. Well, I was just going to say at first, I was like, is it John? Is it Pops? Is it Robert Patrick come to show the T-1000 how it's done? Like, who is this? Who is this being, this creature behind this wall? Is it um, John Craven Pop with a new episode of Country File on a Sunday? Well, that killed it. Tough crowd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, it just wasn't my sexy dulcet tones talking, so people just switched off. Oh, yeah. um, 
yeah and so i find it quite funny that actually it was pops that managed to cock block kyle uh in his in his moment of white knighting and being like oh babe it's gonna be okay i i know your father figures just died but get your head down there love that's pretty much how it was going whoa he's just, well come on if he's saying since we're about to run out of air <clears throat> what else was he going to suggest well, I certainly not say sex, because that would just increase your heart rate and your your like uh, your intake of oxygen, and you'd die all the more. No, quickly. but they know they know that they need to reproduce to have John, or do well, they, they, they not can't. need to have John? If they're now. in a hermetically sealed room; they're both screwed. I mean, there's actually a what? scene I think in Harlem Nights when uh, Richard Pryor locks Danny Aiello into this kind of like uh, basement with no air, and he says, "You'll last long enough for the rescue as long as you take little." Sounds little, like Sophie's asshole. Little sips. Sorry. Whoa. <laughs> little, little sips of air. So the next scene is him going. Uh, um, and what amazing film is this then? Uh, a film called Harlem Nights. One of the actually, God, what year is it? I think it's like '87. It's kind of when Eddie Murphy's kind of star had tarnished slightly through no fault of his own, not to do with scandal. It's just uh, I think he just started to pick really shitty projects after Coming to America happened. He did like, oh God, where do we start? Harlem Nights, Vampire in Brooklyn, Metro, mm. Beverly Hills Cop Three. He kind of ne never really reattained, I guess the. The, like, well, when he started off, it was like one amazing film after another. It was like 48 hours, and then it was like Beverly Hills Cop and Coming to America, Trading Places, not in that order. But, like, he just seemed to have, like, one classic film after another for about a good, like, three or four year run. And then mm. he kind of hit the late 80s, and it all kind of went wrong. Boomerang is another one, kind of about him being, like, this, like, dating Lothario and stuff. It, uh, he never Lothario. Really, well, he Love never it. really caught uh, firing him after that. Which is weird because he's such a like a talented person. He think he's one of the genuine movie stars of the day. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. But, I'd, but I'd like to see him return not. to stand up. <laughs> Would you? Yes, he'd be amazing. He's still one of the best stand-ups of all time, and he kind of like uh, I guess cut his career short because he wanted to go into and do movies, which he was also amazing at. And he can sing. He's like a triple threat, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> He's like a triple threat. It's a bit like you, Ethan. Um, anyway, back to the uh, two minutes. Um, the what minutes? We see these minutes, the two minutes from Two Minute Terminator from Genesis. Um, yeah, so Pops. We actually see Pops embracing Sarah. Right. Is this the first actual, like, hug that he's reciprocated? Uh, maybe, because he's kind of a different Terminator now. And this is why I say the show Jump the Shark. Because it's just like, oh, come on. How is this going to work? If you did another film, a yeah. liquid metal Arnie, would that work? I don't know. Because it kind of I defeats think the so. whole point of a Terminator. He's, 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 he has to kind of maintain the, the T-800 or the T-850 form, because that is Arnold. Like, I know, but... I, I can, like, the, even the endoskeleton looks like it's based on Arnold's body. I know. And you're absolutely right, but I think without that mechanical thing that he is, he's kind of like, there's no point of him looking like a tank. The T-1000 is yeah, exactly like a slick version, and... so it doesn't require an actor that's kind of like built like a brick shell. And because he's so synonymously associated with the Terminator, it would seem odd to see him like melting and going through doors and turning into some liner on a kitchen floor. I don't know. Do you not think, do you not think as well, like throughout this film, they've made um, Jai Courtney look more and more and more kind of like Arnold-esque? Like this final scene when you see him walking across the uh, garden towards young Kyle. Like yeah. his trousers, his hair, his jacket, the boots. Like it's almost like he's Arnold. Like he's just kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. I felt like he kind of looked more and more and more like Arnold throughout the whole film. But anyway, I've massively digressed. Oh, yeah. so, Pop so Pops now is kind of, you know... He's embracing this relationship that he has now with his kind of like surrogate daughter. Um, so they then say, oh, he's just like, oh, okay, so I thought you were dead. And he's just like, no, just upgraded. And he's like, what about John? And he's like, there's no way that he could have survived the blast. And then we go to the next scene, which is then when he's just like, okay, there's only one thing to do then. I, I find it really weird that the one thing that they needed to do was to go and talk to like young Kyle, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, like, that was seriously it? That's how they killed John Connor? Really? Hmm. Or are you, like, hiding? Is something going to happen in the last? Because honestly, dude, I cannot remember for the life of me how this ends. It had an impact on you then. <clears throat> it really did. 
I think I was more excited about getting out of the cinema and looking at the Terminator toy that you'd brought me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, Yeah, so, like, that was the biggest anti-climax ever. He's this, like, souped-up half-man, half-machine, half-nanobot, whatever. He's a man-bear pig, basically. Said it myself. I felt quite nice. Um, (laughs) And, uh, yeah, like, he's meant to be, like, the ultimate, like, killing machine terminator and i just feel like that i've been cheated out of this epic kind of like new machine against the old machine which is what we had with robert patrick in terminator 2 like that fight scene at the end just when you think one of them's won it the other one comes back and then something else happens and then some the suspense is like maintained Mm. and um yeah so sorry i distracted me with your notes um like really that was the end of john connor it was just felt like such an anticlimax i've already cheated there was no like epic finale well he just walks in and goes hey i'm liquid metal now and then they're at a farm no 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 no. like the way that john connor was like destroyed he literally had like a couple of fisty cuffs with pops and then well, he how, gets how, held on that thing how would it should have gone like, down that was they, so they had like bollocks. an epic fight and you had your kind of emotional punch no, but which it was you, like, it was goes, not epic no, but that was not epic at all. The actual fight between the two of them wasn't epic at all. I've well, seen more epic fights in fucking well, I think it doesn't have to celebrity be death match. I think a lot of films, like, I mean, you can start with Blade in, like, 1998. Bloody. <clears throat> Bloody. Uh, that you, when you try and create an epic kind of showdown with things it usually turns into some cgi shit fest you actually lose the kind of main components of what made it great in the first place and i think a lot of the star wars films the prequels especially kind of lacked what the original star wars films had the the lightsaber battles were more spectacular and in more spectacular locations but there wasn't a kind of a battle of wills or a battle of words between the two people fighting so i think you kind of have that so this was more a battle of will well, you, they touch. Well, he, John Connor is talking to him again. You're obsolete, and you're this, and you're that, and you're no good. But I think it's maybe it's just not kind of. Ethan, you say that to me every day. What? You are obsolete. Not now. You're useless. Voice. You're rubbish. You're obsolete. In fact, uh, <laughs> listeners, the voice. Oh, sorry, the notes said Ellie just mentioned. They've sent you. It's actually the start of an erotic story from a swinger site. I'm going to get you to read it in your husky voice at the end of the show. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking forward to that. It's like the first paragraph <laughs> of an erotic story. I just want you to hit, just do it. Uh, How old were you when you discovered that actually porn magazines weren't about looking at the pictures and they were about reading the stories? How old were you when you realised that? Uh, Was it like when you learnt to read at like 15. 25? No, 15. I could read at 15. Did Did you get Beryl to read the stories out for you? Yeah. While I was tugging on it. <laughs> did you did you did you type it into the computer so that the computer would say it back at Ellie, you? Ellie, there were no computers. Stephen Hawking day. style. <laughs> well, actually, you're you know what, like a hundred. <laughs> can attest to this. Would you ever find porn in the woods? Yeah, I did. I once found a porn magazine. It was um. Why was there Mayfair. porn in the woods? What is what's wrong um, with that? <laughs> It was like full on like bush. It was like eighties, like full on eighties. Like why, bush why are the woods are full of old porn mags? You'd, it's not now. It's like Bigfoot sightings. I think maybe got, that's like, where husbands go to escape media. their wives. I haven't been at the pub. I swear. Look at my card statements. Yeah, but when actually he's just been in the woods wanking. Some no. I used to find like piles of magazines though, as if they'd been like dropped. Oh like, god, no, no. I only ever found one, and it definitely it was definitely kind of. Um, tampered with you could say but yeah me and my brother found it <laughs> and uh, we uh baron i was just looking at it and then i kind of threw it but then baron in his weird potential serial killer kind of demeanor picked it up and kept it and then i found it months later and i was like was this the porno that you found in the woods and he was like no no like my brother was so private about stuff like that i remember once found condoms they weren't like condom wrappers Cod they hadn't they hadn't used I was like, oh my god, condoms. He was absolutely mortified. And I was like, what? It just shows that you're a fucking neek that wants to practice safe sex. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, massively digressed. Well, I was saying at the end of this, it is a kind of battle of wills. I just don't think it's been perhaps put together very well. Because apart from him going, my Sarah, blah, blah. Leading up to that point, the fight with John Connor, when he's kind of like, I guess, verbally attacking him, that he's an old has-been, essentially. 
in, mm. in a in an awful interplay of our life meeting art because kind of I guess Arnold's facing. So Arnold's kind of, old, Arnold's the old bull and John's the young calf. Yeah, but I like I think Arnold now even in his career he's kind of hitting this kind of thing. I mean he's gone back to the well with Terminator, and I think a lot of actors have kind of tried to do that. I mean the the Expendables series is very much like that. All the kind of it wasn't a huge part, but I thought he played quite a good role in Maggie. No, I know. I'm not saying he's acting stuff, but it's kind of him trying to find his place oh. now in the world of movies after he did like uh, nine or ten years as governor of California. Dude, I think he. Sh I think he should run for fucking president. He's not American. like that. I know, but that would be so amazing. Like, I think I told you that um, told there'd you. been words between between Donald Trump and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Trump was saying about how the fact that since Arnold had started the um, American Apprentice that the ratings had gone down. That's crap as a presenter. He's like, okay, Arnold, let's uh, sw let's switch jobs then so the next people can sleep at night. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then Arnold's retort was, all right, then, mate, let, let, let's swap jobs. You take back The Apprentice, and I'll, uh, I'll look after America. And then I just had this, like, you know when you, you see someone, like, going to a daydream and they look up to the sky? I just suddenly like, had this like fantasy of Arnold Schwarzenegger like running America. <laughs> I imagine every like political partner being some like Austrian buxom wench like in like German like yodeling like milkmaid like outfits. I think that'd be absolutely amazing. Amer <laughs> again, America, there'd be a much happier place. It would be. <clears throat> it would be. Um, back but, to the film. Well, I think you're. I guess you're. Uh issues with the kind of anticlimactic ending are quite well founded i'm just i just basically they, they, it wasn't that greatly put together there's obviously effort made to kind of have some kind of like emotional punch between pops and sarah which you kind of think yeah hit. no i liked that i but liked that but that, that was point yeah just re like obtain like i, I wanted carnage yeah. i wanted there to be a genuine like question in my head who is going to win this battle yeah but i had you none of that it was so seem high enough because no, it was Arnie got his arm ripped off, and then he kind of kind of got like hit with wa wave after wave after wave of John Connor. <laughs> no, John Connor was just kind of more like showing off and doing his weird kind of like morphing from one shape to another, and yeah. I don't know. He was doing some kind of weird dance. Shit. I don't know. It, he wasn't pulling the punches I wanted to see anyway. But um, we then go to the scene where. We find out, right, okay, so John's dead. He's gone. Great. Um, and then Kyle goes, oh, so there's only one thing to do now. Weirdly enough, go and see my younger self. I found that very, very odd. But um, the first thing I notice is, as you see Sarah walking across the garden towards this small bar, um, the house behind, do you not think that looks like a typical like murder house? It's the white house with like the panels and like the... Um, well, it does. It, oh, like it's, the like, it's, it's, it's meant to be a farm, isn't it? I think, well, the weirdest thing for me in this scene like for, this, farm. for this later bit, the weirdest scene for me is like when the dog's going crazy, he goes, hey, calm down, boy. And then the, <laughs> the camera like pans back and it's this, uh, this Labrador just sitting there, happy-go-lucky, not even looking at who's oh, walking yeah. towards them. <laughs> and in no way, in no, no way, shape or form is it a threatening dog either. <laughs> it's like, what's going on, boy? Relax. <laughs> It's a French bulldog. Um, that would have been amazing. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I kind of questioned um, the whole like, well, just this whole scene. Okay, so like, imagine you're a parent. You look out of your window, and you see, first of all, you see some random woman walking up to your son. You then see her kind of like nod towards a tree where there's two older men just stood there looking creepy as fuck well i mean there's we've not seen i don't i think the families in the next may be seen but they've not alluded or seen that anything at all to do with that at this point so i, I couldn't but, answer but, but, but. i just thought that'd be really when also like i don't know it just and especially in this day and age if you like saw your child if you saw like a grown man like going up to your kid in the front garden like and kneel down and start talking to him you'd be absolutely Terrified. I don't think it was oh, terrified. They've 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 yeah. Um. But also, like, also. considering <laughs> that. <coughs> Say no, Bill. No, it, Bill. Bill. Don't hit me. <laughs> um. I mean, aren't the authorities like looking for these people as well? Would they be just showing up at like random kids' houses, especially considering Kyle claims to be the older version of this boy? 
Well, it's not just the authorities, it's actually escaping that Cyberdyne facility. First, you've got to fight your way out of, like, hundreds of feet of rubble, and then you've got to get off the facility. Bearing in mind, this is, I guess, you could, uh... It's like saying the Apple headquarters suddenly exploded, and all the buildings in the complex collapsed on into each other. It's like, you know, there'd be rescue teams, there'd be police, there'd be uh, fire and emergency people. Uh, yeah. I don't know. My final, my final thought, my final musing on this uh, particular like two minutes. Listeners, the only thing saving this flat episode is Ellie's sexy voice. <laughs> How is this flat? I'm bringing up loads of stuff. No, you're doing a great job. I'm just, I, you know what? If I, anything's I probably spoke flat, less on this episode than hair. I ever have with anything. And the reason, yeah, but that's is, just because you want to hear me talk. I know it's so good for the first time ever. I think Ellie, I'm okay, so attractive and a potential romantic suitor. Keep this voice. I'm literally going to wake up tomorrow and it's going to be all back to normal. Oh, God. Back to your Woody Woodpecker voice. Ugh. <laughs> hey, everyone. Didn't What's ha going did, didn't, didn't have a complex about my voice. The fucking lollipop Probably will do now. Wait, if you everyone at work I said how high your voice used to was care. Well. I never used to care how tall I was until I met you. And I never really cared about my voice until now. So, thanks, Ethan. Um, yeah, my last... You have to mentally abuse last... these bitches. They won't accept anything less. Why are there baboons' asses like that? <laughs> so she, she is the bitches what time it is. <laughs> I kind of stumbled, but I saved it. <laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. That's how she shows the bitches what time it is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so my final musing was, as Sarah was speaking to young Kyle, do you reckon like, in the back of her head she thought, I'm going to fuck you later? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what would have gone through my head. It's not incest if people already donate in the future. Yeah, that old chestnut. The paedophile exactly. time travel paradox. Fine, then it's not incest, darling. It's paedophilia. Um, yes, Ethan, did you have any cock-ups or fact attacks? Uh, I actually uh, do. I'm going to read one out to you now. Go. I can't fact attack because my Try voice it. will Fact break. attack, Ellie. Go. <sighs> fact attack. <laughs> Cock. That sounds like an air conditioner breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> That's because my lungs are just breaking down. Jesus Christ. Were you just smoking cigars last night or something? No, uh, I was eating. <clears throat> Actresses considered for the role of Sarah Connor. We've not covered this so far, I don't think. But uh, Amelia Clark, of course, was considered. She got the part. I can only assume the reason for that is because Alan Taylor, who directed this film, uh, would know her from uh, directing episodes of Game of Thrones. Uh, Brie Larson, of course, uh, was considered for Sarah Connor. Brie Larson is in uh, 21 Jump Street. She's in uh, the film Room, which is critically acclaimed. Uh, actually, this summer, in fact, no, this March, in about a month's time, she's actually in uh, Kong Skull Island with the most manly man that ever graced the silver screen, uh, Tom Hiddleston, that everyone is crazy for for some reason. I still don't know why. Uh, hmm. And Margot Robbie, Ellie's favourite, uh, was a consultant. Oh my for Sarah Connor. God! I'm so glad she didn't know. She would not have been right for it. Margot Robbie cannot be sexy. Um, whoa, that's an oxymoron. Um, Sarah Sarah Connor cannot be sexy. I it would just be sexy. weird. I think she could have probably been a tougher. I'm sorry, but Linda, Hamil woman than Linda Hamilton is just Sarah Connor for me, and she is not sexy. That's that's who Sarah Connor is, man. Hmm. If you want a hot chick, like a hot badass chick, go for um, Underworld, or I don't know. What's the um, What's the vampire movie with um, Kate Beckinsale? Underworld. Oh, that is Underworld. So, what's the one with um, Mia, whatever her name is? Oh, Miljovic. That's uh, Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil. Evil. There Evil. we go. I've got another fact to tell you. If, if you want a sexy <coughs> chick that's badass, just watch Resident Evil. Yeah, she's not terminated. Good, she'd be a good um, fact attack. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Sarah Amelia like Clark states that Arnold Schwarzenegger saved her in 1973 when she was nine. That would mean Sarah was born in 1964. That would also mean she was 20 years old in 1984. Uh, as in the first Terminator, Linda Hamilton, of course, was I think 29 when she played Sarah Connor. Uh, so she doesn't look 20 for sure. Uh, and she would be 53 years old in 2017. So there we go. Oh my god. 
Whoa. Uh, do you have any more facts for us, Ethan? That's actually all I have, but I, uh, I've sent something to your Skype. Are, are, you, re are you ready? I've are sent you, ready? you an erotic story. Take your time with it. Don't trip over your words. Just relax and just... I, uh... feel, like, I feel like we should play some kind of, like, schmoozy music. Oh, I will. You can add that later. Okay. So. Go. <clears throat> Go. The following morning, Anne and Karen called her out already for a morning call. Dolores showed them around the suite. While I make coffee. Eventually, we all set off for the pool, which was situated at the back of the hotel, Sorry, with no. the beach behind. Breathe through it. It, it took forever to get there, That's it. Oh, yeah. as we had to pass a couple of designer clothes and shoe stores. Only after I told Dolores she could get a new pair of red high heels to go with the dress that she was wearing tonight. The black was excellent, with plenty of. Is this actually porn? I, yeah, I think this is the portion of the story the swing the site. Stop buying time for yourself, you fuck, and keep reading. <laughs> so hot. The pool complex was excellent, with plenty of room and waiters walking around in case we needed any food or drink. We were all lying on our sunbeds, the girls in their bikinis, and me in my shorts. Dolores had a green, a deep green bikini and looked gorgeous. I couldn't wait till she took her top off and showed her firm breasts. Anne didn't mess around whipping off her top. And wearing just a small white thong, she stood up and walked over to the bottom of Dolores' lounger and started rubbing cream all over her body, all the while smiling down at Dolores. Karen told her to behave, but I was finding it so hot. I had to put my hands over my shorts to hide my erection. This doesn't work. I thought a wall to was telling this story. <laughs> I know. It's alright, I'll change it. I was finding it so hot, I had to put my hands over my throbbing pussy. Yeah. Anne must have noticed as she came over to me and sat on the lounger. Rub some on my back, please. As I was rubbing her back, she started to lean into me, saying I had a lovely touch. When she stood up, I rubbed her legs and then her lovely ass. God, I was sweating by the time I'd finished, and it wasn't from the heat. Eventually, she moved back to her own sunbed and I got my breathing back to normal. I looked over at Dolores, and she just smiled and winked at me. You could have ch chosen something a bit more salacious, dude. Sort of. Ethan? Are you Sorry, still there? I'm just dumbfounded. Just the voice is so good. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that was Ellie Fitzgerald reading a passage from a really bad erotic story from an erotic website. Oh, hey, you fucking Who's bitch. Calm? <laughs> Uh, if you've still got this voice tomorrow, then we'll do another one. I'll find something really filthy, dirty for you to read. Please, can you find something that says the well, words... Why don't, why don't you find something really dirty? Because I, okay. I actually went okay. on a porn site, and that was the best I'd come up with in the time we need, we, we need, we need, We need buzzwords like pussy oh, and yeah. cock. Yeah. Say that again. What? Cock? It's the, you know what it is? You sound like a posh person. You go cock. Cock and pussy. Oh god, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're doing a show here. Right, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Ethan has if been a complete cock. If anyone's watching this sitting I've... in front of a desk and the desk has flipped over in front of you, I apologise. Good <laughs> Um, yes, thank you for joining us. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter. Oh, Twitter. On Say Twitter again. Twitter. Oh. Um, SoundCloud. Um, you sound like a Radio <coughs> One DJ. You could get a, if you had this voice forever, you'd easily land a job as a Radio One DJ. Well, I'm quite good at acting and accents, so maybe I can just fake posh it up. It's not the posh voice. It's, I just think it's because the, it's the, your, it's, it's your the voice is the gruffness. The gruffness. It's made your voice a bit mm. kind of like clearer, and your words sound like a bit sharper. It's because I have to really like focus to pronounce my words because yeah. there are certain the sounds pain. and certain vowels that literally go completely silent if I don't pronounce it properly. Yeah. It kind of just tapers off at the end. Like your penis. <laughs> <coughs> Why would so you know sorry. That? We have no idea. Hang on. Sex poem. <laughs> Let's find a sex poem. I'm not ready. Find a sex poem. Sex poems for him. All right, erotic 30 dirty little poems. Here we go. Sorry listeners. Bear with me. <laughs> you should have just you should have just gone for like a reader's wives or something. Dude, here we go. Right. right. Here's a here's a sex poem. Go. Okay. Send it to me. You've got it. Go. We're doing this just... live. We'll do it live. Live. 
I don't have a. It said Ethan was typing and now oh, it's just gone. Fucking send it. There you go. Fucking send it. There you go. Slow okay. it down. Slow it down. <clears throat> <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Shall I change dick to cock? Sure. Filth it up. Your cock is the dream. Erect. It's a fantasy. Can I blow you, please? Coming on her face isn't really degrading if she asks you to. Thanks for existing. You're the woman of my dreams. Mount me already. Fucking essential. Because it feels so damn good. Oxygen less so. This isn't hot, dude. I know! Do Put your best. mouth Come on. in it. Suck it with everything you've got. Then wait your turn, girl. Is it in yet, dear? It's a silly question. You won't need to ask. Dude. Fucking come in my pussy. There you go. There we go. It's in that voice. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's so good. Do the last one again. Good like this. Um, come in my pussy. There you go. Brilliant. Oh my god. Oh my as I, as I oh said, my I was god. like, <laughs> oh, But actually, she said, come in my fucking pussy. There you go. Oh, there you go. That's how she said it. Anyway, we're going to have to sign off because this has just gone... So I really hope my dad doesn't listen to this one. If you still have this <laughs> voice tomorrow, we will most certainly get you reading some uh, erotic fiction. Uh, I will I tell you what, leave leave me to the erotic. You, you find um, something fiction. good, and we'll open the show with it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, let's just do that. Can we? Should we not just find like an erotic? Oh my god, Ethan, I've had the best idea. Erotic poems next... for podcast. Yes. Yeah, but unfortunately, oh it, it, it will be you reading it with your regular voice, and I it won't know, work. But it'll just be every time I'm ill. Okay. Whenever I'm ill, I'll be like, right, then I'm fucking grotty as fuck. Give me the sandpaper. So every time I see you, I'll just like throw like water I've dug out of a toilet or a drain into your. <laughs> and I'll read erotic poems, and that if can be our. If we ever go out, I'll fill the fill your bottle of water from the toilet. <laughs> We'll just call it Pussy Poems. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I'm going to say it again. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on SoundCloud. Um, you can listen to us on iTunes. Please do leave a review. Um, and that's everything from me, um, Ellie's sexy twin sister. Um, Ethan? Let's just hope that voice is still on tomorrow's episode as we uh, round out the uh, rest of the shows. I do hope we went... Uh off the off the road in a good way there. I was just trying to utilise Ellie's voice. Sadly, uh, I failed because uh, all the stuff I actually just grabbed off the internet there and then is as vanilla as a fucking Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> so <laughs> I apologise. Uh, I will try and get Ben and Jerry to come over tomorrow and uh, you know give Ellie some inspiration. Sort sort me out. Yeah, uh, yeah hasta la vista. But, yeah, you know oh, I'll say it. hasta la vista. Baby. There you go. <laughs> you can get a doggy style, you can get a ling on your side. Those are your only choices. This is my house and I get to say. Got it? Watch out for machines.